Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Our Lady of Peace Church and Shrine here in Santa Clara, California. We are very happy you welcome those of you who are joining us on our live stream. Today is Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. The 8 a.m. Mass is being offered for Sister Purity birthday, Barbara Manicucci, Larry Burton, Asenia Mariano, Gloria Ant Antonio Gonzalez, Liserio Mariano Jr., death anniversary, Chica, birthday, as Warren, special intentions, Sania Materas, Natividad U, special intention, Sister Purity, special intentions, Melissa Rufino, Carlos Dato, Nitis Ratan, special intentions, Alexis Morisi, Norbert Gonzalez, Manuel Rella, Mark Maldonado, Mark Fernandez, Thanksgiving, Ali Portillo Fernandez, birthday, Dave Shailash. Earlier, the 6.30 a.m. mass was offered for Dong Su Han, special intentions. The 12 p.m. mass will be offered for holy souls in purgatory. And the 5.15 p.m. mass will be offered for St. Vincent Ferrer and St. Michael, Thanksgiving. The celebrant for today's mass is Father Brian. The entrance hymn is number 204 in the Pure Missile, 204, O Cross of Christ, Immortal Tree. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, 
that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hall, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road. You bypassed the land of Edom. But with the patient worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people Sarah's serpents, which beat the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a Sarah and mount it on a pole and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by the serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Oh, Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I know when, when you're younger, there's a lot of things that you, you see adults do and you can't wait to, to sort of be an adult and get to do some of those things. There's one thing I want to tell the the children here that that you that one thing that you will look forward to which you may not may not enjoy when it happens is when you sleep wrong your neck hurts for the next few days so typically children can like sleep twisted like a pretzel and they wake up and they're totally fine but when you get into like your late 30s early 40s and thereafter anytime you sleep just sort of in a bad way you can't you can't turn your neck for the next five days and so basically you are in pain for the rest of the week now I say that because when those things happen and maybe you could use a tummy ache as an example or a headache or something like that that when we have those things happen to us, typically we complain. We say, oh boy, my neck hurts so bad, or oh, my stomach hurts so bad. And on one hand, it's kind of okay that we let people know about it, because maybe then we can get medicine and things like that to help treat the problem that we have. But sometimes we go beyond that, and we just complain, and we grumble, and we you know, make everyone else miserable because we are miserable. What about the days that we don't have a neck ache or that we don't have a tummy ache or that we don't have a headache? Do we give thanks to God for those days? Do we thank God for the fact that I'm feeling great today? So, Typically what happens, and unfortunately, when something bad happens to us, we complain and mention it. But on the other days, we don't even notice it. We don't notice how wonderful it is to be able to turn to the left and turn to the right without any problem. We just take it for granted. And we just presume that everything goes well and that that is the way it should be. What we find in today's first reading is that God is displeased with an ungrateful spirit. 
that this is basically what the Israelites are manifesting. Right? If we think about all the things that, 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 that they've gone through. So they were freed from slavery by God. So while they were in captivity in Egypt, they were casting their eyes to God, please free us from this tyranny. God heard their prayer. He, he freed them. He parted the Red Sea so that they could walk through it and led them out into the desert. And as they were in that time of, of, of journey, of, of wayfaring, moving towards the promised land, there was obviously some difficult um, realities that they had to live through. They became hungry. God gave them manna. He gave them bread from heaven. And what do they do? They then they complain about that. So they complain about being in the desert. Then they complain about having to eat manna every day. It's so boring to eat this bread every single day. So on the one hand, was there suffering and was there difficulties in the situation that they were living? Of course. To be in the desert was difficult. But they have much more to be grateful for than they have to complain about. So our character is, is often tested, it's often tried when we receive the things that we want. Right? So is it the case that when I receive or obtain the, the, the prayer that I've been asking for or the the gift that I've been asking for? Is it that the benefactor then ceases to exist for me once I have obtained what I've wanted from the benefactor? Because oftentimes that can happen. The benefactor ceases to be necessary and we forget about him. We forget about perhaps the example of for those of you who can ride your bike, we forget about the fact that my dad was helping me keep my bicycle upright once I figured out how to do it. I leave dad in the dust and I'm driving down the street until I fall into the bush because I don't know how to brake yet, which is what happened to me. So we forget about those who helped us to get there sometimes, oftentimes because we become so proud of our achievement or we become so accustomed to where we have come. So the benefactor is no longer needed until he is needed again. And that is where you and I find ourselves. We have much to be grateful for. Obviously we have bread every day. Do we, do we have to go to Mass? We, we should have the attitude that we are privileged to go to Mass. We get to go to Mass. We should always be grateful for this gift of the bread from heaven. Thinking about today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, you will know that I am. There's an old drawing in some of the, the old catechism books that has a picture of Jesus Christ on the cross and blood flowing down from his wounds and then there's seven streams of blood that are going down the, the mountain of Calvary and they have in the, written in the stream the seven sacraments. And so we get to receive the gift of life from Jesus Christ himself on the cross. We would do well to be grateful for that. We live in a, in a time, in a society that has more material wealth than other societies have ever known. And so often we find ourselves around complaining and grumbling. And so when we, when we consider the gifts that we have been given, that God is not forgetful of me, 
The very sacraments themselves confirm that and attest to that. We would, we would um, be blessed by that very act of gratitude and oftentimes minimize the things that we grumble about and complain about. And so today as we, as we continue to, to turn towards um, the Paschal mysteries in Holy Week, may we have a, a real, real focus on the blessings that God has given me so that I may be truly grateful, so that I may know where to turn and know what I truly need. So that ultimately, we may have hearts that are just as eager to measure our blessings as we are to measure our sufferings and recognize that we always have more blessings than sufferings in our lives. Number 253 in the Pumasal, 253, take up thy cross. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept us out of our hands, for the praise of the Lord of His name, for our glory We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim.
holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as, as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Number 171 in the Pumicil, 171, Jesu Dulcis Memoria. Sensia 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who chose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Number 95 in the Pure Missal, 95, Ave Marie Stella. <laughs> Amen. 